what does a beautiful future look like to you? You can flip a negative mood on its head. This was a talk that was all over the place, but then New York, you are all over the place. There are experiences that you just don't get anywhere else. So hello everyone, I am Retta and I am your moderator. Just so you know, it's my first time moderating, so go easy on me. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the 92nd Street Wise Talk Netflix's Get Organized with the Home Edit, Clea Shearer and Joanna Tucklin in Thank conversation. You. <laughs> so excited. Thank you for doing this with us. We are so thrilled. I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Um, I, 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 we talked about this beforehand and then we were told it would be great on the talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Joanna, you know, I, I actually have one more episode. I just started the last episode and I've noted, you know, I know all about the rainbows. Yeah. I know you like the color, you the Roy G. Biv. Yeah. The hearts, I yeah. noticed that you love a heart. You're a headband heart kind of gal. I am. You know what? They're just, hearts are so happy. They always make me so happy. I actually have them in my bedroom too. I'm like, I try yeah. to get a little bit away from them so that it's not like so cute, but like I can't help myself on some level. I just think they're great. Like, can you be upset at a heart? Like, it just brings out. That's how I feel about rainbows. You yeah. just can't be upset about a rainbow. Like, yeah. And when we were filming said show, Get Organized, our crew, um, I mean, as the episodes started yeah. going on, as the taping started going on, they're like, are you guys actual Care Bears? Right. Like, do you always have to wear something right. emblazoned all over? And right. Like, it's like yes. Care Bear stare yeah. every time. It was like lightning bolts, a cactus, a horseshoe, yeah. a rainbow, a star. Just were, basically emojis. They were like, please, girl. Just one, one <laughs> yeah. neutral color. Yeah. Now I enjoy a great deal, and I mean, I I have to actively not do the rainbow thing a lot because it would be obnoxious. You know, I like that color coordination. I love that. I specifically wore this necklace. I don't know if you can see. Oh, but, yes. And my and my rainbow jewelry. Oh, so cute! Amazing. So I'll just do this for the rest yeah, of the totally. But let's let's get into it. Um, I you know I use your Instagram kind of as a soothing space for myself. Um, I love to look at the organization. I love to look at the 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 color organization and all of that. So I'm as excited about all this information as those tuning in to hear what you have to say. So we're, we're, I'm just going to start with. How did you guys meet? Okay. Okay. Take it away, Clea. It's, this is my professional job is to explain how we met. So I'm, I'm just going to launch right in. And I already know, but tell yeah, us. Yeah, I know. I know. It's okay. Take a quick nap while I, while I explain this. Um, so I moved to Nashville um, five and a half years ago. Joanna had moved just a year and a half before I did. Um, and I did not know a single person when I got here and I did what any normal adult does is, you know, you go on blind friend dates with people. Um, and so I did that with our mutual friend, Leah. She was my very first friend in Nashville. And I told her I really wanted to start an organizing company. And she said, I have a friend for you. My friend, Joanna used to be a professional organizer in San Francisco. She wants to re-up it in Nashville. You guys should do it together. And I was like, that's amazing. That's great. But anyway, Joanna was like, no, thank you. So uh, <laughs> she was just straight up like, no, I'm good. Right. And I was like, what? This is before meeting Clea, by okay. the way. This is all, this is all before meeting Clea. Well, I convinced her to go to lunch with me. Yes. Um, she begrudgingly went. I know. I went to, I went to lunch. <laughs> you went to lunch and you were like, but no, no new friends, no business partner. Yeah. But I'll start lunch. That's and true. anyway, I, we sat down and we just immediately yeah. connected and gelled and we never were like, so tell me about like the last 10 years of your life. We were more like, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Yeah. What are, what are we going to do? So we complement each other. And we just like decided to be business partners without ever asking. Right. And we set up our entire company that same day. It's true. I mean, the story's correct. I did not want a business partner. I did not need a new friend and I, you know, <laughs> and, you're welcome. You know what I mean? Like, 
You wouldn't be on with Rena. No, I would not. I but upon meeting Clea, the second I met her, I was like, one hundred percent, this will work. I had, I mean, one hundred percent, and it did. Here we are. Like the best, like that, that quick, easy vibe. That like, there. You know, I have certain friends that I'm like, how did we not meet earlier? Yeah. Because you are my life partner. Yes, we are life partners. We are. We really okay. are. I mean, sometimes our husbands are there, and we're like, you guys are in the way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I'm grateful that you all met. So I appreciate well, thank you. that. Um, okay, so why do you think the home edit has been able to grow so quickly? Well, um, I had a different answer for that five days ago, but now <laughs> <laughs> I would say in present day, Netflix has been very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but before Netflix happened, um, our life. Uh, as of last Tuesday, um, we really, I mean, we hit the ground running. We've been really hard workers from day one. Again, we went into business the same very day we met and we never stopped working. We never took our foot off the gas. Right. We never took anything for granted. We said yes to everything and every opportunity because we just were like, you never know. You never know. Doors will open. And you have to say yes to things when you're, especially when you're starting. I mean, and we still say yes to almost everything. Right. We're just, we just are yes people in that way. And we love to work and we love organizing. And we loved our job. So every opportunity that came at us, we were like, of yes. course. And I think that when we did all those jobs and said yes to everything, we also took that opportunity to leverage social media in ways that organizer, professional organizers specifically hadn't really before. So I think we kind of hit a sweet spot on the internet um, that was just kind of like, it was like a perfect wave that we were able to ride. Um, we also did very early on some celebrity projects that kind of became like, we are now like the organizers for right. celebrities and they were sharing on social and it just kind of took off in a way that we are still shocked about, yeah, but every day, <laughs> happy to be here. <laughs> I will say that obviously getting on television, especially on something like Netflix, which goes to different countries. I mean, my Poshmark business blew up as a result of being. <laughs> I'm so glad. You guys, I can't even tell you. I, I kept seeing these orders come in. I don't have that much stuff on there. And it's been like, it, it trickled, you know, when I first opened whatever and it trickled. And then three days ago, I'm like, where did all these orders? It didn't <laughs> get me that we mentioned it in the show. I totally forgot because I oh, hadn't watched it yet. My I just gosh, that's my, look. That's my favorite stat. What a cool thing. Uh, <laughs> like, that's amazing. People are like, your closet sold out. I'm like, first of all, it's not. So go look. <laughs> Second of all, I'm like, why? I didn't. I, I literally, when I watched the show the other night in bed, when I finally got that's to my episode, watch it. <laughs> I was like, oh, we said. <laughs> We said it on the show and then I had all, and then all these mess, literally when I open it, 500 things every time I open my account. Because of the, oh my gosh, I love that. That's so wild. Banana. So, you know, you guys blow up my plush mark. It's all good. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> Great setup now. Thanks. And it's still good. It's still together. Oh, I believe I've, that. I've moved stuff around um, just because of what's going to fit in there. You have to see what the... What the yeah, we'll is. come over next, next chance we get. <laughs> yes. So, so um, what has been your all-time favorite space to organize? Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, That's, it's like picking kids. I, I mean, have, I have a couple answers. Oh, I have a lot. Oh man, this is really. Hard. I don't know if we can even answer. I know. So I have good ones. One. I can't. I can't possibly pick. Well, let me tell you mine. Let me tell okay. you mine. Okay. It's not my space. It's Chloe's pantry. That's what oh. I was gonna say. Because it's so big, there's so much more opportunity for beauty. Well, yeah. <laughs> the reason why I was gonna say Chloe's pantry is because that was one space that we got to that was already extremely oh, organized so good she had done a great job so it was an extra creative challenge for us to be like how are we going to even improve on this so right that when she walks in it feels like a new space and right. so i think that just because of who we're dealing with chloe you know she's the most organized human being so that was just like again a creative challenge to make her scream was just yeah oh everything everything chloe's so good at organizing and she's so lovely and so much fun and yeah. it's just like we wanted to we never want to disappoint anybody but it's like the bar was so high she's so highly organized so it was just like 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did it. That's a good answer. I, I like knew, that. I knew I had a thing with yeah. therapy and that was, that's it. That's the thing. Cause I love organization. Um, okay. So w- what are the best tips for, you know, people who have small closets or spaces without much room um, yeah. or like custom built-ins and what, 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 what can you tell people to help them when they feel like challenged by a smaller space? I think we always say look for negative space in the room that you can work with. So okay. oftentimes it's working vertically, like on a wall or a back of a door and or adding a top shelf or yeah. floor bin. Exactly. Like adding storage. You just don't look at one horizontal, you know, shelf. You want to really look underneath and above and everywhere around to see where there's extra room that you can utilize. Yeah. We hunt with like a magnifying yeah. glass. We're like yeah. that emoji with the little guy with yeah. the magnifying the, glass. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. We're like, oh, there's this much space underneath the hanging shirts on a closet shelf. You can put a very shallow bin underneath there and line up accessories or hats or, I mean, like, you know, we just look for every single space possible. And like Joanna said, also utilizing the back of the door mm-hmm. or any kind of wall unit is just like, it's inventing space. So right. it's inventing storage that didn't exist. And display things. Like, you know, if you have a purse collection, instead of having to, you know, put it in the closet, you can also put it on the wall, on shelves or hooks or whatever you want. Like display the things that you feel passionately about. And that can be art also. There's a, there's a couple of bloggers that I follow that are really good at that. Um, I love it when you can display hats and, and purses. I love a purse. I yeah. Love a hat. <laughs> you have a great collection. And you did the most incredible job with your closet. When we walked in there, yeah. we were like, is she cheating? <laughs> I know. And we're like, no, you did it. <laughs> I mean, Greta, you are good. You're well, amazing. It was the first space that I moved into. Yeah. So uh, when, I, when the house was being done, it was the only thing that was done first. So I just started slowly moving in and moving, moving, you know, rearranging, rearranging until I got to a place where I liked it. Doesn't it make you happy every single day? Always. And, it, and I mean, you guys always say, you know, particularly now I'm just bouncing around, but you know, you're like the clear bin. So you can see as soon as you see stuff, it's so much easier. Getting dressed is so much easier because I can see my stuff now. You right. know what I mean? Know what you so yeah, I love it. Um, so what are some of the things you can do if you can't go out and buy a ton of product for a space? You know, where, where do you start? Yeah, absolutely. Your favorite. It is. I'm going to throw it to Joanna. <laughs> it's the edit. I mean, it costs zero dollars and it makes the biggest impact, honestly, more than even product. Having your stuff edited out down to the things that you love and use is the biggest single takeaway you can have. It's the biggest game changer for any space not just for the physical look of the space, but for your own mental clarity to know that every single thing in whether, I mean, you don't need to say your whole house, but let's just even say your closet or the kitchen, whatever it is, every single thing in there, you have addressed it, you've looked at it, you've decided to keep it, you either love it, need it, or use it. And that is really amazing. I mean, true. It's it's great. And it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. Okay. Um, uh, what do you suggest I do with clothes I want to fit back into? <laughs> um, well, welcome to our very favorite category. It's called the aspirational section. Yes. Um, yeah. We have labeled things aspirational denim. I have some aspirational dresses and skirts yeah. hanging in my closet. We all have that stuff. And I think that it's perfectly fine to keep it. If you have the space. If you have the space. And also, I think it's, there's a difference between I, this is my goal to get back into this versus I had this in high school and it doesn't fit, but also like, should I be wearing a sequin halter right now at 38 years old? Like, so I feel like there's, you know, be, be realistic and honest with yourself about whether or not that it ever even matters to you to get back into it. Right. But I think we all have those sections, we all have those items. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's just part of life. Right. You just want to make sure that you really are trying to wear it or get back into it and not have it take up too much space because space is of so much value. And if it just makes you happy to look at it, that's a whole different different category. 
But like there are a couple dresses that I have in kind of like my formal dresses section. I don't wear a lot of formal dresses. Um, you don't? I know. I, just, I tend to not go to work in them. Um, but you know, there's one dress in particular. It just really makes me happy. It makes me feel glamorous that it's hanging in my closet yeah. as though I might go somewhere. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I like to keep it there. I think that all those things are fine as long as you're not encroaching on your usable space that's like getting in the way of getting ready every day. That's right. You, you, I mean, when you guys did my media room, you saw I, I basically built those cabinets so I could put those dresses in there. Yeah, they're covered, they're big. Will I ever wear those dresses again? Probably not, but it makes me happy. No I know, way. that counts for a lot. You know what? I think it counts for a lot. These days, I mean, what? what? Anything that makes you happy. Something makes you happy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it. So, okay, so while we're all stuck at home, um, what projects should we start with? Ooh, that's a great question. Well, we always say a couple things. One is always start small so that you don't get overwhelmed and you can see a project all the way through from start to finish because you don't want to start so big and then you get paralyzed and then you just throw in the towel or throw everything back into the closet worse than it was originally. Right. right. So start small, but also now there's this new added layer of wanting to be, you know, where the highest traffic areas are, like the fridge or... You know, the kitchen your entry. Yeah. Right. And the, I mean, people are just home so much more than they've ever been before. So the house has to just work harder for all of us. So while we always say start small, take baby steps, people are now tagging us because they've seen the show and they're like surrounded by their entire kitchen and pantry all on the floor. And I'm like, ah, I hope you're okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, start small, feel like you have completed a project from A to Z, and then you can start working through other areas of your home. But we all know that again, space right now is really important and yes. setting up um, any kind of work from home station, a homeschool station, anything that is going to help your productivity from being at home, I think is a really important place to start and to be because we're, you know, this is kind of the new normal for, for a while. Well, speaking of working from home, what are your tips for organizing your work from home space? So I think that the most important thing, Joanne and I have been talking to people literally for months about this. And I think that the most important thing is that, again, you want to have your space physically organized, but it's also just so important for your own mental well-being to have a space that if you're working, you can put it away, physically put it away and have it leave your zone. And not everyone has home offices that they can just close the door to. Right. So we're working with people on a lot of transitional flex spaces like okay, my dining room table is now my office, my homeschool classroom, my this, my that. So, you know, we like to say, even in that situation, get a cart, you know, and have your cart organized with the tiers of your work supplies and maybe your kids' school supplies so that you can right. physically roll it away at the right. end of the day. Put it in a hallway closet, put it against a wall, just so that you can kind of leave the office. Yeah, you, you need know? to clock out you and need step to away and, and distinguish what that space is for and what time of day you're intending to use that space. Right, we're used to like leaving the house, going to work or going right. to our job, coming back and then relaxing. And now it's like, right. do right. I live and work here? Right, like, you know, I have a desk in the bedroom and that's like, I take Zoom calls, but then I also sleep there. But I am very good about like, my desk is clear every night before yeah. I go to bed. Right. Your desk is in your bedroom? Mm -hmm. She's so weird. She, she would honestly have her desk in her bed <laughs> if totally. she could. She just only wants to be in her bedroom. It's so wild. I mean, so I wild. only want to be in my bedroom. Yeah. I, can't, I will say though, I have, you know, I have a, um, a vanity set up in my, in my closet, which is a dressing room essentially. And I have an office with a desk, but I tend to go into the closet with, and I think because the lighting's much better. So, you know, I, I zoom it out in there. I, I did my podcast from there, that yeah. kind of thing. I so love it. Yeah. I get it. But the bedroom, I would be like, get this workspace out of here. A hundred percent. But you know, again, Joanna would fit everything in her she'd put the kitchen in the bedroom. I would, I would have a whole again, I want I strive to live in a hotel room. So like I'm just practicing, you know. I mean, I I, I just picture that your desk has the robe hanging very close by <laughs> and like rainbow candies on there, and then you just you're not wrong. No, I mean, that's correct. She I mean, always, it's, it's, she's huddled under 12 blankets. Yeah, it's true. Times. Yes. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. That is hilarious. Um, so you're, you're both moms. You both have two kids each. Um, how do you teach your kids to organize? 
Ooh, with a heavy hand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know the rainbow has a lot that, that helps. It does, it's, right, it does help. I, I think that Joanne and I are very similar in terms of how we engage our kids with organizing. We have to always remember that first of all, they are children right. and they need to learn the basics and they need to be responsible kids with their items. But we also need to recognize when it's an and us issue right. and not a them issue. Like for instance, I will give you a for instance, we both, of course we have our children make their beds every single day. They have to, yep. but we don't like the job they do. <laughs> right. but we both go into their rooms after they leave for school and remake make their beds, beds, which is so insane. So it's like, I can't expect Sutton, who is six years right. old, right. I cannot expect him to make the bed the way I would like it made, right. but he needs to be responsible yeah. enough with his, yeah, with his room right. and his space to make it. So of course it's like a skew and, and the pillows. Yeah, totally. Like, it's terrible. Also, my daughter, not, uh, she's nine, she has not really grasped how to fold a drawer the way I would like it folded. But mm -hmm. can I really expect that of a nine-year-old? Maybe not. Maybe my expectations are too high. For me, I'm like, nothing can be on the floor. It either needs to be back in your drawer or hung up. If you have a problem folding, maybe we hang more than we fold, you know, like that kind of stuff. But my interpretation of Stella getting dressed every day is opening her drawer that I have already folded that's nice. And instead of just selecting a top, she must fling it <laughs> in the air and tie it into knots and what? Like that, that just must be how she gets dressed every day is, is the only thing I can imagine. But so again, recognizing that yeah. like, you have to be respectful of your space kids. You have to clean yeah. up your toys. You have to do this stuff. But also if you make it back into the bin and you don't line up the magnet tiles in rainbow order, well, that's something that I'm yeah. mom's going to go into. That. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, Clea said it exactly correctly. We have to so, have so, yeah. so you go, you, you both go back and remake the beds. Sure do. Um, but but they keep their rooms neat. They do. They do. And they do. They're, they are responsible about it. My daughter tends to be a little bit of a collector, I would like to say. So, like, she knows I don't like all the little knick-knacky tidbits. Like, the, I don't even know what she does. Yeah, I'm like, do you have money? I don't, I don't even know. But, like, you know, like, plastic little rings that must come I know. From I know. Like, it must be a school lunchbox thing. I don't know. Like, they must be a treasure box at school. I don't know. I, I truly, I don't know. Where I mean, they're, they're not going to birthday parties. I, I, don't, I don't know where this stuff comes so from either. So, this stuff comes, and my daughter just, like, she'll tuck it in a corner or in a drawer. Like, she hides it. So, I, I'm going to have years of issues of dealing with this kind of stuff. <laughs> so is she. So, so is she. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. So, I know, I know that, um, pantries excite you, Joanna. Beyond, yeah. I feel like you're a pantry girl. Clear, are, are you the fridge girl? Or are you a yeah. pantry girl as well? Both love both. Yeah, they're I both will say. super satisfying. I, I don't know, we might say we're both pantries more, just because they're more of a, of a puzzle. They're usually, you know, just there's more pieces that need to be figured out. A fridge is super fun and it's very, satisfying because everyone you know needs to have their fridge somewhat organized to make it function well but a pantry is just a puzzle a pantry is so fun i will say though if we have a pantry and a fridge going on yeah for some reason yeah i will get put on fridge duty that's true that's i true. don't even know why because i like the bits that's and right. they're always more bits in the pantry. The great thing about Joanna, we never even have these conversations. So thank you, because this is helpful. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you for the marriage counseling. Yeah, yeah. we never have these conversations, but it's like, oh, I guess we just naturally do gravitate to things right. without even talking about them. Right. I don't it's know. true. It's true. It's interesting. Again, thank you for this counseling session. I have to say that um, I was thrilled, and I remember you doing it in, in your stories, and then I saw it on the show, and I was like, I wonder if it was the show that sparked it and then it ended up in her home where you cut out the ice cream and take it to the bin. I did. Because I did it in Jordana's freezer and I was so pleased with myself. Yeah. It's fun um, to come up with a new solution and Clay was like, I have something new. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm mad that I already threw out the boxes for my <laughs> because I was like, dang it, I didn't put that on my it's just fun. And it's just like when, you know, we, we do so many projects and we have labeled um, 10 million things. And so it's just kind of fun when like just a new idea pops in and yeah, it's, you know, it's fun to have a new idea. Do you, this is just for me. 
Do you use regular tape on the bins that go in the freezer? What do you? Yeah, what? absolutely. You can, or you can literally just cut it out and insert it because as soon as there's items that are so pulled it up it, against it, pushes up. And also, even just like uh, in a freezer specifically, items do get a little bit more stiff because of the you know freeze component. Right. So you really don't even need tape, honestly. You you think it'll? Because I feel like I go in that that ice cream bin so fast that it'll just. Well, that <laughs> that is possible. My kids really liked the frozen yogurt bars that I got. And right. so I'm like, you are kind of messing up my system right now. Right. It's like, can you even get your own section? Yeah. That, that is one of the problems for me personally with organizing. I mean, it, it happens with clothes too, but like with organizing food and stuff, I want everything packed and full and ready. Yeah. So it looks, because as soon as you take one out, you're like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I need a staged house is what it boils down to. What it boils down to is you need props. I'm just kidding. Um, but it does no. pull from the back. Yes, yes. But I also, in my head, and I know this is weird and this is just, you know, the love of the look of organization. I was like, do I need to go buy spring things to put, you know, have a hub in stores that will just keep stuff forward and straight up. <laughs> Let us know how that works out for you. We might have to like bring that into our own That's house. so I mean, great. That's right? so smart. Yeah. Okay. Measure, them to, measure them, you know, based on the sizes of your bins. That's so great. Start production on that, ladies. <laughs> That'll be the next thing I buy. Yeah, we'll move you in. You get royalties. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so speaking of pantries then, what are your top tips for an organized pantry? So I think that the most important thing for a pantry, I think Joanna would probably agree. I know first you're going to say edit, of course, but beyond that, we've already said that's a critical yeah, step everyone. because everyone thinks that every item they have is current and good, but most yeah. people do have expired items yeah. or just like, you know, protein powder that they got because they thought that they were going to make shakes and just never did. They thought they were a protein powder person and they're right. not. And they're not. Yeah. So, you know, there are those kind of things that it's always helpful to take a sweep. But we always say the best thing you can do for a pantry is to group your categories into really broad categories that won't get you, you know, frazzled when you're trying to unload groceries. You know, right. don't, don't think of like a pasta bin. Think of it as a dinner bin, you know, just like really nice broad right. scope categories so that you never really run out. You know, you just want to make a snack bin. Make, you know, we, we always say, honestly, a pantry can generally be grouped into six categories. Breakfast, dinner, snacks, sweets, cooking, baking. That's really what every food should be able to fall into those categories. Every every single food can really fall into that. I mean, you can also be a canister person and have each type of canister for brown rice, white rice, whatever, you know, quinoa, all those different things. But if you don't want the fussiness, we call it fussiness, of like unloading and decanting all those items, you just have these six categories and you are organized. And you really can, if you if you like the look of canisters, but the ease of a bin, just like an all-purpose bin, you can have a combination where you do just like a focal setup of your basic brown sugar, white sugar, flour, you know, rice, whatever like your kind of just staples are mm -hmm. that you don't work through all the time. And then bins for everything else. I have a canister and bin uh, collection in my own pantry. I work both ways and yeah, it, it, it really is. If you, if you make the system broad enough, but specific enough, <laughs> it's a very general specific, uh, situation. But if you, if you make the categories broad enough and you're thinking not just about a snapshot in time, like right. the food you're looking at right now, but just in general, like what food will I ever bring into my home? Right. I think that that ends up serving people the and, best. And I think also being honest with yourself and like, what are you going to be able to realistically maintain after you come home from the grocery store? Like, are you, are you really going to, are you going to end up with a line of empty canisters because you don't really feel like dealing with that? Yeah. Or are you that type of person that gets satisfaction, like Caitlin Brown, of yes. pouring rice into the canister? Like sometimes we go into someone's pantry and they have an empty canister of cereal and the box of cereal is next to it. Right. And I'm like, you're not a canister, you're not person. A canister person. And that's okay. You can still be an organized person, but you're just not a canister person. Yeah. Just not right. just get a bin and label it cereal then. There you, you go. Want, and you can have all of your cereal lined up. Exactly. There's always a solution. Canisters. Canisters really make me content. Yeah, me, like, me I, too. I'm a, you're a canister person. I realize that like when they're empty, I'm like, <sighs> again, <laughs> okay. I can't deal with if, if it's not a showroom, I can't deal with it. Right. But two, I I hate not having enough. Because yeah. I did I did the thing, you know, at the beginning of quarantine 
when you guys put out that that list of things to start. Yeah. I didn't do it with you because I knew I, I had to get my mind right in quarantine. <laughs> so it took me a while before I started it. And I just ordered all this stuff. The thing is, you really do have to go through the stuff first before you order. Because I just ordered all this stuff and then I was like, oh, I can't use this. Right. Like, this is too small. Right. You know, so I was like, I'm not trying to create backstock. I want everything in one thing. Oh, yeah. Let it be done. Yeah. So I, I had I have to talk myself into planning. Well, doing it really is. It is a process. And it's so funny. Actually, it's a system. Oh, right. It's a system. Um, oh, my God. Um, everyone using the gift stickers of like, us <laughs> and I'm like, man, we're a lot. Um, but I will say it's so funny to me because a lot of people used our two week little yeah. edit project at the beginning of quarantine and man how cute were we thinking we i know we're only going to be in here for two weeks i know what a novelty <laughs> what a what a cute moment in time <laughs> i mean i we need another two week uh yeah. project, list of projects that we can go through i mean truly i remember we were like do we extend make our 14 day edit should we make it a 28 day edit yeah. i mean 28 days lol but you know. <laughs> even I know. <laughs> okay, so so tell us about um, filming the show. I know that you guys are still f- blown away by the fact that you have a Netflix show. Yeah, yeah. That it's, you know, trending in so many countries, watching yourself in different languages. I've, I'm the same way. When somebody sends me a clip a- of me speaking French, I'm like... Isn't it wild? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, but tell me about, about filming the show. You know, what was your favorite project to do on the show? Obviously, I know that my babies, but <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you did love your house. Obviously your house. I will, I will say every single project that we worked on, and I, I love, I think it actually plays out this way in the show. I don't care how famous the person is or how not famous the person is. We poured our sweat and body yeah. and physical tears yeah. into every single space and project because again we're like we never want to disappoint any client no. ever and this is being filmed on no. we yeah. can't have a single like every space has yeah. to shine it has to be perfect. perfect it has yeah. to be perfect it has to be perfect i i mean you saw your episode um so you know there are many times that we almost didn't finish yeah many many, many. um yeah. And the problem is- You weren't the only house that we almost didn't finish. No, I was crying. You were not the only house we almost didn't finish. I will say <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris's house was- We've been out, we almost didn't finish all of the projects actually. We almost didn't finish all of the projects. Yes. Is the truth. And the thing is, so Neil's was I think the first, it, it was very early on in filming. And I think it was the first space where we, we were like, day. we had one day, we had a couple of hours really to do this massive space and we were, I was so stressed. I sweat my mic pack off like three times. They had to come and retake my microphone because I was sweating so profusely. Oh my gosh. I put it on here for all the time. <laughs> um, but I was just, it was so stressful. And then the thing is, is we, we finished. So every other project from there on, we would tell the producers, we're not going to finish. And they were like, but remember Neil's yeah. house, you right. finished. And we were like, no, no, but no, this but time, we won't. But we won't. we're not finishing. Yeah. Um, so they just stopped believing us. And then, so they were just like, you're fine. It's, you're going to be great. And like in your episode specifically, I, I don't know if I've yeah. ever been that stressed out in my life. No, she, she was like, she literally seen there reading the book. I mean, that was like, not I show. was dying. Yeah. It was One, weird. She was sitting there reading a book, but she's on a beach. She couldn't, when, she was paralyzed. I was paralyzed. And when Joanna realized that the bins were not fitting into that cabinet, and the way that. you turned away from the cabinet and you were like, they're like, do they fit? No, they don't, they don't fit. <laughs> like, you were like, we gotta fix this. I feel, Clea went to, hmm. I went in a, in a deep, dark place. I went into a void. And then you started reading out, I literally, like, I literally started tearing up. I was laughing so hard because I, and I knew when I came back, I remember Paige saying, okay, so we ran into some snags. So we're going to do your interview first <laughs> and while they finish, you know, that kind of, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, but I was like, of course, you know, I mean, it, it's one day. It takes a while to just go through boxes. The idea yeah. of even just going through boxes 
makes me loopy. So yeah. I was so to me, I was like, of course, isn't they're not done? I can't believe you even thought you were gonna get it. <laughs> that's what I, that's where my head was at. When I watched it to to see <laughs> When you came running out of my video, you were like, the bitch sit! <laughs> like, the pants on fire, out of the house. Like, we were for real. People, I know people think that these things were just for TV or like that, that we knew the plan ahead of time. No! Then, no! Like, no, no, pants! Like, the pants on fire. No, I, truly, we, we had no idea of any space we were walking into until we got yeah. there. And then we didn't even know the stuff we were organizing right. until we started going through it. And then you don't know if the product's going to work until you try it. You don't it. know the product's going to work. And the product even if the measurements work. work, sometimes the product doesn't work in the measurements. I mean, then the shelf, you know, sometimes there's a, a weird thing. I mean, you just don't know until you're in it. So, yes, every minute of stress that you saw was very real. Yeah. And the, the bands! <laughs> You know what it made? It made me think of Sutton. The way you ran out of there and you were just yelling, I think we might be able to make it in this hour and a half that we have left. Oh my God. I oh, was man. in tears and made me very, very happy to, <laughs> to oh watch God, you. So much fun. I just, I just love that you knew we finished, but even watching it, you're like, are they going to finish? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So, after after watching yourselves on Netflix, um, did you notice anything you didn't know about yourselves? Oh, I mean, we just talk over ourselves a lot. <laughs> yeah, definitely, and we're loud and we yell and scream. And we jump up and down and yell at every project. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. just can't help it. We just, just can't help it. I, I will say, and every every person in their workplace should be so lucky to be so excited when they're done with a job <laughs> have the client come in like you're so excited I, like my paranoia is i hope they like it because clea and joanna are real excited about this <laughs> <laughs> they are. I think you're an actor so you could have faked it had you i mean you, you guys were like come on in! <laughs> i was like i mean of course they're gonna like it but i just kept picturing people being like Okay. And, and you being like, <laughs> well, what I was nervous about every time were the kids because I'm like, right. the kids aren't going to care. And if they do right. care, it's probably because they don't like it, not because they do. Like, kids aren't going to be excited. Those Harris Burka kids were happy. Oh, I know. My gosh. Oh my gosh. I was so thrilled that she was so happy. Oh, me too. Again, the kids, you know, they're honest. And yeah. like, you just don't, it's hard to like thrill a child. I know <laughs> from experience. And um, also, Edricans Garage, she was in, um, oh, she was paired cute. with Rachel Zoe's closet. It's the multi space garage. The oh, right, right, right. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Well, they need, a, they need a show. Those, kids, those are... kids need their own show yeah. because they were so excited about the garage. Oh, it was <laughs> the cutest thing ever. My heart burst. So, yeah, I was thrilled. I mean, it's got to be a thrill to make people so happy because I even I remember when I walked in <laughs> when you when you opened the doors to the wrapping paper station <laughs> I like I felt the the welling up behind my eye I was like you are not gonna cry on an organization <laughs> pull it together Retta but I was so because you know, I had my my envelope thing, and I was just shoving stuff up. And I, you know, I'm at work, but of course. And I thought that was organized. I can't tell you the number of texts I've gotten from people oh my gosh. about the wrapping paper station. They're just like, oh my god, it makes me so. I was like, it makes you happy. <laughs> you know I, mean? I get to go in there every other day. I'm not wrapping gifts every day, but I get to go in. Oh my! So and you know, my assistant was here. You know, when we uh, when we shot, and so we had to move stuff around because there was other stuff that had come into the house, and there was stuff that was getting put in out in the in the pool house. And so, you know, when I do my wrapping for my Poshmark, she would have to go in there and pull the stuff out. And I go in there one day, and I was like, "Oh, I'm not putting these things back." I was like, "You know what?" We're just going to leave these here. Yeah. <laughs> Those are props. Again, it all goes back to a show house, right? Yeah. Do not disrupt. 
with the home edit did in here. I'm going to, I'm going to store this and touch it up anytime, anytime. Oh my God. Um, so, so, I mean, I feel like this may be a, a foolish question, but would you do a season two? Oh, a hundred years you with us. <laughs> uh, yes. And I can I tell you though, I, I definitely was like, what can I have them do next? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see it. Yeah. I, just wanna see what, I, I know that you guys were like, you know, the producers were like, well, her closet's already done, but I oh. almost want to see what would you do differently. I mean, oh. honestly. Your, your, your closet is a kind Chloe. of like a Chloe pantry. Yeah. Because it's the same thing where it's like, oh my God, how would we wow you? Because it's already it's so, so good. So your closet excellent. is so excellent. Oh, I, I mean, but I did it based on stuff. It was before the book. It was before your, your first book. Um, but I saw stuff that you were doing in people's homes, like the purse hanger thing. Mm -hmm. The purse hanger is the game changer. Excellent changed my life. Like yeah. I literally was snapping it. I was like, you guys, I was on the home edit and they had this thing. <laughs> and, and because, you know, my cabinets are above the, the, the vanity, I have, there's a stick that pulls them down so the bags oh, come hard. out like this. Oh, God. Really, oh my God, they're amazing. No, amazing. It's, it's a game changer. It's amazing. It really okay, so speak, speaking of your book, tell us what's in the new book, which the, it's so pretty, of course. Oh. Thank you. I love it. Um, so our first book is, you know, it's a primer on just how our basic systems work on getting organized and we walk everyone through kind of just like the basics of room by room, like in, in the pantry, here are 12 different pantry options and this is how we did it and this is how you could apply it in your own life. The Home Edit Life is really about living your life the way you want to with all of the things that you might have and us showing how to contain and store those items. So it's really more about the things that we all live with instead of just like the basic spaces in the home. The contents of your home and your hobbies and your work, all those things, like how do you store Right, it? how do you store things for if you have a fitness routine, a wellness routine, if you travel all the time, if you have pets, if it's for your job, if it's a memorabilia, if it's something that just makes you happy, all of those things we kind of account for. We thought that the first book kind of said it all. And then the second the book was out, people were like, but what about this? What if I'm a knitter? What if I do? We're like, maybe we right. need a deeper dive right. into like the things. And, and yeah. everyone, you know, lives with these items. And I think that we wanted people to not have any guilt associated with owning stuff. Right? Right. So we're like, we'll show you how to contain it and how to deal with it. Um, and you know, I'm sure the second this book comes out, people will be like, and what about board games? Or what about, you know, it's like, I, I collect coins. So I, I feel like, you know, there's always going to be more, you know, right. items that are going to need containment, but, um, hopefully this book gives a, a deeper dive into just like, you know, the, the different categories that we all seem to kind of collect in our own homes. I know, um, I know that you've, uh, organized the clothing for Doug, the Doug the pug, right? <laughs> we have, we sure have. Um, what What are some of the the weird things or odd things or people things that people wouldn't think you'd find a need for organization for that you've done for people? That's a great question. Yeah, that is a great question. I'm just trying to think of certain hobbies, probably. Right. Um, I mean, I think it's like everything, what I've started to notice is people have so many routines right now. So it's like, whether it's like your essential oils collection, your diffuser collection, your right. 1 million vitamins, or, you know, people are really, maybe we've done this to people, but people are very into stations right now. So right. it's like, you know, the, the hot beverage station different from the cold beverage station, right. the, you know, it's like everyone... I think I we love a station. I think maybe, maybe, I think maybe we inflicted stations on people. I think probably. we inflicted stations onto people. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I definitely do. But I think it's just, you know, I love people's oddities and, you know, collections. And Neil Patrick Harris has one of the best kind of just memorable, not even memorabilia, just unique oddities, like, like from Disneyland in 1940. Yeah, we can organize you know, them. No, 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 no. But I just yeah. mean like all of those things, like, I love people's collections. Yeah, you know, I think it's so just, fascinating. It's such a glimpse into the way someone's mind works. And I really, really love that. Like whether it's someone's rainbow glassware collection or, you know, I just, I, I love organizing the things that are really special to people. I think that it, 
like we're like let's show it, right. highlight it, put it out. Absolutely. So I think that when we start organizing collections, it turns into like let's display the things that you love because if you love them, why are they collecting dust in right. a cabinet? Like, right. Let's put them out. Exactly. You know. So I think that that's my favorite. I also like. I remember we have organized so many things. Oh my god, I can't even. I can't even tell you. I remember you talking about um, weird labels you've had to. Oh make. yeah. Lots so what are some of those? What are some of the weird Our labels? Our first memorable one, we can explain. She had to, she came across it. Our first weird and memorable label request that we got was Jewish stuff and magic tricks. Yep, and, I remember. Yeah, and we were like, is it a Harry Potter bar mitzvah? Or like yes. what? We were like, like trying to figure out what could that possibly, what could that be inside? Right, we were like, what is in this bid that's being labeled Jewish stuff and magic tricks? <laughs> and finally it became such a thing that the, woman who requested it messaged us and she was like, well, my husband's Jewish and I'm not. And we were getting ready for Hanukkah and he said he wanted a magic set for Hanukkah. And after Hanukkah, I just didn't know what to do. So I just asked, uh, put it in a bin and I labeled it Jewish stuff and magic tricks. And I was like, it's literally yeah, Jewish there stuff you go. and magic That's tricks. what it is. So, you know, I mean, there are just like so many fun moments for labels. Um, again, aspirational denim yeah. is one of our favorites. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a bin that we labeled for like American Girl doll like pieces that oh, yeah. was uh, babies, bibs, and butts because it was butt powder. Oh um, yeah, like little, all the little tiny, all the little yeah. Um, I mean, they're just like so many yeah. fun ones. It is fun. It is fun. I mean, what we think is fun, maybe right. right. It, right. We're you know our version of fun is right. probably not everyone's totally. version of fun. Copy that. Okay, <laughs> one last question. Okay. Um, what is next for the home edit? Well, our next book is yeah. imminent. Um, right. so it releases tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and oh, we are, have an exciting new, uh, what, what do we decide? It's home and it's, uh, it's home and personal care product line. Thank you. Um, and we're launching, uh, in, just a month or so. Yeah. Um, and it is a line that we've been working on for almost two years now, which is so wild because who could have predicted a pandemic, but we're launching with a hand soap, a hand lotion, a hand sanitizer and wipes. So again, mm -hmm. very excited we've been about working this. on this for so long. We are like, um, are people buying soap and wipes right now? <laughs> and hand sanitizer is like, what? Yeah. Did, we, did we predict the future? Yeah. Um, so that is a little bit uh, of an, a crazy timing situation. Um, so anyway, that announcement is coming soon, or like the launch is coming very soon. This fall, we're launching that. Um, we're also launching um, another new category of products at the Container Store that's coming mm -hmm. um, in the fall as well. Uh, and I, I don't know. And then what? It's Christmas. I mean, I, I don't even I know. know. I know. So it's, it's wild it's, year. It's been a wild. It's crazy because the last six months, I feel like. You know, we've just been like waiting for everything that's happening. And now well, we also summer. launched new markets, actually, too. Oh, that's right. So what? Yeah. What countries are your uh, are, are your products in? Well, so our product line is currently in Canada, Mexico, Guatemala, um, and the UK, and it will be launching in the United Arab Emirates and South Africa, I believe, in September. Oh, I'm sorry, in October. Something like that. We need to, I'll, I'll get that. Yeah. But we have, we have a bunch of stores that are going to be carrying our products that are coming up. And we also just uh, launched new markets for our organizing services. So previously we were in LA, Nashville, New York. Now we're also in uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area, Orange County, Detroit, Atlanta, Washington, DC, New York, New York still. Yeah. Um, South Florida. South Florida. I think that that's it. How do you pick where? Um, so there are a few different, all right. So we first had to pick cities that had container stores. So that, which is, right. you know, I'm like, I would love a container store in like Charleston so that we could have a Charleston market or yeah. New Orleans or something, but we just, you know, we're at the mer mercy. Um, mm -hmm. So we have to pick locations based on that. And then we put together a whole list of cities that we wanted to find candidates in. And we still actually have cities that are on like our next phase yeah. of opening, but we really wanted to make it candidate based. So like the people that, you know, we can only open so many at a time right. just because of bandwidth, but we got so many incredible applicants from those locations that we're like, okay, the next phase we will do Chicago or we'll do a Houston. We were actually going to do a Houston this round, but at that particular time with the COVID spikes, we decided to put that on hold and focus on some other areas. We just had, we had so, so many incredible applicants. Yeah, we what still ma want to What, what makes an applicant 
incredible. Like, yeah. what do you, what, what is it you're putting on your resume that? Not actually the resume. It's really, it's really the person. Like, it's their, it's their energy yeah. about organizing, and it's their personal passion for it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. they're wanting to deal with a startup because that's what we are. You know, right. we're a small company. I know people think, oh, they're at the Container Store and Netflix, and I'm like, oh, I don't think you understand that. Literally, it's like like a handful of people run this entire company. So, um, it, you know, we're it's we're still really really small. We're like yeah. in our infancy, and so when we find people who are just energetic and passionate and just like light up at this type of a job, and don't they're, they're not here for like because they think it's glamorous, they love organizing. Yeah. And you can just tell, you can just tell when people love organizing. You can just tell. Um, so yeah, they were just exceptional. And um, we were so excited. Honestly, we were like, okay, we'll, we'll start with four cities and then we'll do another four. And honestly, we found so many excellent ones that we're starting with, we're launching eight. And yeah. we're just, oh. Yeah, but but the next phase is coming, and now I can't open more places fast enough. I know, like, I know. We had so many good ones. It was just like COVID and everything else too. We also tried to kind of tackle the the majority geographically. You know, so so like Detroit, for instance, if they needed to get to Chicago, like they could, or like it. You know, there are certain locations that could potentially service other areas right. if needed. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to do Philadelphia, Chicago, Houston. We still want to be in Charlotte. Um, we, we have a lot, we have a big to-do list. That's going to be yeah. the beginning of 2021. As soon as yeah. we calm down from all of this stuff, we're yeah. going to immediately that, right, right back in. And we want to do Canada, I think, too. I know, I know. We well, have a lot that yeah. we want to do. I was going to say, are you going to go international? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, it just, I don't know. Again, we never stop. So people yeah. are trust me, everyone who works for us is like, um, man, you're going to be launching all these new cities the same week that your Netflix show is coming out, then you have a book coming out the right. next week, then your cleaning products line. Right. It's a lot all at once, but that's truly the only way we know how to do it is we're, uh, we are a lot. Yeah, we are. We we're are a lot. lot all I mean, you're definitely stuck in one place to be able to think about yeah. and work on things. I mean, I haven't seen you guys on a plane in so long. It's so I weird. Know. I know. I miss airports. I, I can't believe I'm saying that. But I miss <laughs> airports. Any airport. Any airport. I was dying when you guys had your stay <laughs> and you went to a hotel. I know. I know. I mean. I know. I just, I don't know. It's. <sighs> it's okay. We're, we're inching back. Yeah. We're inching back. We're, we're going to yeah. do it. We're, get, we're getting there. Getting our feet wet. Well, Thank you for all of your organizing knowledge. I appreciate it. I will, you know, I already use some of your uh, techniques and SOPs, um, but I look forward to getting into the second book. Oh, so right. Thank you for doing this, Greta. Greta. You're amazing. Seeing thank your you shining so face much. is so heartwarming. Rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah, rainbows. Rainbows. Hearts. Always. <laughs> rainbows and hearts. <laughs>